Today we're heading off to destroy our neatly manicured lawn. I don't really have anything nice to say about lawns. They don't really do anything that useful. There are a lot of maintenance. They don't provide any services for wildlife. What we want to make our garden into is basically a jungle of food, flowers, and a thriving ecosystem. And we're going to be using the horses to put in the first stages of that now. We have 16 days till we move, so we felt now was a good time to buy an entire orchard of trees <laughs> and a veg. <laughs> the orchard has started to arrive. So it looks like it's about 100 plants in here. A few of those. So this is our current garden. It's basically just a massive lawn that someone's been mowing. We've got a few plants here that we've ordered from a wholesaler, just a few. Um, this is all soft fruit, dogwoods and roses. These are miscellaneous flowers, we don't know what they are. We're excited about them though, so it's fine. Um, different berries, and here's some things we bought from the garden centre, because we were impatient enough not to wait for the stuff to come from Parker's. Um, so, I just think this is interesting. One of these from the garden centre costs 11 .99. It's a honeyberry. Blueberry, it's a type of blueberry. And over here, these are blueberries. These are blueberries, and those, oh. all of those, cost about the same price. So, what we've done today to try and make this a bit less like a field and a bit more like a garden is put in an alleyway of fruit trees. Now you can't really see them probably very clearly, but there is 22 apple, cherry, plum, and pear trees in the garden. So in this small field next to the garden, we've planted another 22 fruit trees. Um, so in here is more cherries and plums because it's slightly more sheltered. Um, and this is where we're planning to undergraze it with some geese. Um, we've got our old dog kennel, so geese might be the first livestock that we get. Next comes soft fruit, which requires a little bit more heavy duty work. So we'll be bringing the horses in with our harness pile to create some ridges. Strong start. The one on the left was the pole for the plough, so we're now having to commandeer a pole from something else. Uh, here's Nimbus. Come to inspect. <laughs> so Mike's trying to loosen everything up because everything is seized. A gentle touch. So this is where our big fruit patch is going. And today we're going to put in some ridges with our team. So we've got Roger here, his stallion. Opal's in the middle, just trying to make faces at Roger, and there's Dolly on the end. So the plough has been set outside for like five years with no cover, so it hasn't actually been used now for two years because we've been in rented accommodation, so we've needed a lot of grease and a bit of maintenance on the mouldboard to get it back into working order. That's what all the white stuff is, that's lithium grease, which sort of does a better job than WD-40, but WD-40 seems to be able to get into the, the nooks and crannies just a little bit better. So in order to plant the fruit, we're making crowns with the plough, which means turning over one lot of soil, coming back down the other side and turning over another load of soil on top to make a ridge. Straight one. There's a mama bear one. <laughs> Another sort of straight one. It doesn't matter. It's a function, not form. It's not too bad. So next up, because the soil's dried up a bit, we can take out Dolly and Roger with the Cambridge roller um, to squash down the ridges so there's less of an air gap um, underneath to plant into. 
Can we leave him alone? <laughs> I know he's beautiful, isn't he? The key is just to keep the horse in the furrow each side and then the roller goes down the middle over the top, just compresses it down and makes it easier to plant into. Nicely done. Here we go. So we found these old logs just sat, in, sat around so what we're going to do is put them on the sides so that we can raise the bed up. I, I'll just like go down the side and at the last minute roll it in. But it won't look, I don't think he'll look too bad though. It looks like a nice telegraph bomb though, doesn't it? Yeah. little wall coming off at the end here. I'm just going to put Roger back out and then I'm going to go and start planting some fruit. So it turns out we actually have too much fruit for the garden, so now we're going to have to make some fruit beds in the field as well. This is our receipt from Parker's for the plants we bought. So this is our new scale size fruit patch. Um, <laughs> we've got, we're just putting in raised beds, this isn't how we would just like if we were going to go out and plough the spud field, we wouldn't do it like that, but we're just trying to get a nice mound here to plant the raspberries into. How many raspberries, Mike? <sighs> Billions. <laughs> so many. <laughs> So this is the little bit of the field where we planted apple trees and that's where the house is and the garden is beyond there. So because this field is so dry we can roll literally straight away. It's great. At our old farm we would have been waiting about a month for it to dry. This is a real treat. This is the end product of the first phase of trying to grow our jam jungle. Uh, we're really looking forward to getting picking and making some food with it in the summer. Uh, we've also added some geese in the orchard that you can see here. Hello. Very goosey. <laughs> Very goosey. Next up we'll be showing you how to prepare a market garden with the horses, so don't forget to subscribe.